All right, guys. Uh, first of all, the uh, the video that has gotten out about you guys playing one on one. Now you went to the same school as Jason Tatum. Do any of you have Tatum like abilities? It looked like you guys could play a little. Uh, I don't think so. Um, we have uh, we have some tough tough mitts when it comes to the basketball court. We have horrible handles and most of our shots are air balls. Luckily, they showed uh, there was a lot of editing done in that video, so. Um, it made us look a little bit better than what we were, but that was uh, that was probably 30 or 40 minutes worth of uh, worth of video that they had to cut down for a few minutes of highlights for us. It looked like it got kind of physical too. Yeah, I'd say I'd say so. I think everything we do it gets a little bit physical. So uh, we like to bend the rules a little bit, but uh, no, it was uh, it was uh, fun. And like Matthew said, it was a lot of editing. Uh, what were you watching, and what did you think of their skill level? Well, they're more of the kind of the boards kind of guys, you know, more like uh, those guys that, you know, rebounds have no talent whatsoever. Although they did make a couple of good shots, lots of traveling, lots of fouls, but not naturally uh, gifted basketball players. That's for Dennis sure. Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Okay. You're more like Bill Lambert. <laughs> Weiner. Uh, well, how are you guys, uh, for the boys, how are you staying in shape? What are you doing? Uh, normally we have a good thing going where we'll wake up, uh, most days it's around 11 or, uh, 11 AM or noon. So our days have been getting started a little bit later, but, um, than normal than during the season, but we've been a, doing a good job of working out in the mornings and getting it kind of out of the way. And then, and then having the rest of the day that to enjoy the great weather here in St. Louis and, and be outside and go golfing and, and just do all the things outside to, that we wouldn't be able to do, um, in Calgary, Ottawa cause, uh, cause of the cold weather there. So we're enjoying it right now. And, uh, doing a lot of Peloton, you know, bike work and um, doing some upper body stuff in our basement with some dumbbells, but pretty, pretty old school type workouts right now. No rollerblading at all or anything like that, correct? Um, it's, we're starting up soon. We just kind of got a uh, shipment of rollerblades. So um, we're waiting to do that. I think that's going to be the next piece uh, to our workouts. Hey, let me take it back to All-Star Weekend. And Walt, well, first of all, what was it like for you being the father, seeing them both there? That must have been one of the great moments of your life. It was. It was pretty cool. I mean, to to have both boys get to play in an All Star game, and then the bonus with them playing in their hometown, the place they grew up watching. I mean, they grew, you know, the team they idolized growing up, and to do it at Enterprise Center it was pretty special for Chantel and I and the whole family. And it was a blast watching them at the skills competition and the game itself. And they worked hard this year to get there, and I'm pretty proud of them for that. When did you know that? they weren't just good young hockey players that they were going to have a good chance to play in the league. Well, you, you never, you never think about that growing up. I mean, obviously you want to keep them busy. You want to keep them well-rounded, get them into different sports if they're willing to do that. And as they got older, things started progressing, but you still didn't think of that. But when they went to the national development team program, you know, things started moving a little bit more quickly for both of them. Um, you know, you're just thinking back then just to go to college and, and get that experience of playing in college, D1. And as, as they got older, they got better. They started to grow. They got more physically ready to play at that level. And, you know, they're still young guys, 22 and 20 years old. So they still have a lot to learn. And, and But they're heading in the right direction and pretty happy. And it's a lot of fun watching them play. Matthew, you had the great idea, the Yadier Molina jersey. Tell me about that. And, uh, how is it something you had in the works for a while or was it a spur of the moment? Oh, it's more of a last minute thing, actually. Um, I wanted to do something leading up to it. Once I got the nod, you know, just under a month before, probably a few weeks before I was like, all right, whatever um, competition I'm going to do in this, in the skills event uh, or whatever event I'm going to do, I want to, you know, show off my St. Louis side and, and show off my roots a little bit. And uh, originally we were going to do a, uh, um, like my dad's jersey or my dad's uh, old all-star jersey from 04 or 2009. But um, I didn't really want, uh, you know, playing in Calgary. I didn't really want any Blues logo on, on any of my uh, my jerseys. I don't think that would have been right at the time. So um, we just decided that the next best thing was to, to show off the, the Cardinals a bit and show off Yachty. And uh, actually after the game, uh, after the skills competition, one of their uh, one of their trainers was working the uh, the locker room, and so I gave it to him, and uh, he's going to have Yachty personalize it for me, which is going to be pretty cool. So Matthew, tell me what it was like uh, having your dad as a coach and all that knowledge. I mean, 
a lot of guys are coached by guys who may sell insurance. You're coached by a hockey hall of famer. What, what did that mean to you? Uh, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was a little bit different for me. Uh, um, I was, uh, I don't know. I think I, I looked at him more as uh, more as a dad back there than as a coach. So we had definitely had our battles and there are some days are better than others, but ultimately that to have someone, um, no matter what time of the day it was, whether you wake up in the morning where you're watching highlights or you're watching games at night or you're driving to your own games or practices, just someone to, to always ask um, simple hockey questions about. And I think uh, um, a big part of my, my hockey game is, is my hockey IQ. And I think, uh, you know, you're not just born with that. I think you, you ultimately have to gain, gain um, more knowledge throughout your years. So I think having my dad uh, in my corner all those years and having him behind the bench definitely uh, – um, impact in my hockey IQ a ton. Brady, what are the battles like uh, when you're going head to head against your brother? And what's that like? Yeah, well, it's definitely, uh, you know, I feel like it's hyped up a little bit when we play one another. So, um, you know, to have all of our family and friends there to support us, it means a lot. And they've all had uh, an impact on our lives at one point. Um, so, I um, know it's definitely different because I think for both of us are pretty, you know, physical players. So to see, uh, I mean, we're always rooting for one another when we're watching, but to play against each other and try to, you know, focus on winning by playing against each other is pretty difficult. I know you guys are both committed to your um, family. No, it's a lot of fun, and, and it's just all of our families there. Sorry about that. I know you guys are both really committed to your respective franchises, but do you ever dream seven, eight years down the road playing here in St. Louis? I could probably answer that question for them instead of getting them in trouble. Um, <laughs> You know what, it, it's, it's, there's something to it. I mean, you know, I remember when I was growing up, I grew up in Boston and I wanted to play for the Boston Bruins at some point. Um, unfortunately it didn't happen, but these guys, you know, this is where they grew up. You know, um, they were born in Scottsdale, but they li we lived here when they were three and a year and a half. So this is their home. This is where they spent all their time. This is where all their friends are. This is where they went to school play different sports and so they they developed a love for the city of St. Louis and I think at some point I'm a little selfish and I know Chantel's a little selfish and we'd love to have them come back here at some point you know whether they're 28 or 32 or 34 just to play a year I mean they, they're they're part of the history here and but at the same time they're in great places where they're both playing a lot and a big part of their hockey club so you know at, the, for, at first, we want them away a little bit. Let them establish themselves. Um, as great as, as those two are and as accomplished as those two have been so early in their careers, they probably aren't – either of them is not your most athletic child. Is that correct? Say that again. I lost you there for a second. As great as they've been, they're not your most athletic children. You have another no. one that maybe – Yes. Not, not even close. Even in – we play pickleball outside, so – and um, Taryn shows up. Taryn's really good at everything. And obviously she's a phenomenal athlete and she loves going out. And I think a lot of credit goes to the boys. You know, she wasn't just that girl who liked to play doll. She wanted to be a part of what the boys are doing, whether it was roller hockey, you know, basketball. I, I'm, I'm mad she didn't play basketball in the, in the winter. And she did play soccer till she banged up her knee a little bit. But tennis she was a part of. And, you know, it's fun getting her out there. The guy, the boys treat her like she is one of the guys. And she goes out and we don't take any leeway on her. And she actually beats the crap out of us when it comes to pickleball. <laughs> Matthew, a few more final thoughts. Uh, tell me what your goals are in this league. What, what do you want to accomplish? Well, I think uh, the the main thing and the only thing right now, and I'm sure everyone says it, but it's it's just a win. Um, I it's crazy how fast like just four years have gone so far, and um, even in like something like this, uh, with uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now, and and maybe not being able to um, compete for the Stanley Cup this year, you you realize that that's just you know another year goes by and. And, um, you know, without winning that, the ultimate prize. So I think it's, it's come more to my attention. Me and Brady talk about this uh, a lot. But, um, you know, I've been in the playoffs two out of, I guess, you know, three and a half years. And um, when you get there, you have to take advantage of it. And you have to try it. You have to do everything in your power to try to win because, um, you know, that's, that's the main thing. And um, that's, that's all that's really on my mind right now. And obviously you want to establish yourself as, as a player and, and, 
me and Brady both want to be, you know, stars in, in the NHL. But when it comes down, we, we just want to win and we want to have, uh, you know, a parade like the Blues had this past summer. And, and uh, we want to be a part of a winning team like that because, uh, you know, winning teams are, are linked together forever and you can't, can't ever take that away from them. And uh, I know you're, you don't make the call on this, but what about the prospects of playing hockey without fans and returning this summer or going to a North Dakota or to a Buffalo and how's everybody there? I mean, I don't know what they're, what they're talking about right now. It's just everybody has their own opinion on what should happen, what's going to happen. So I've kind of got past the point of, of looking at uh, what people think and, uh, you know, put that, uh, those thoughts in my head because sometimes you get too high and too low about stuff and then you see uh, something come out the next day and how we're shut down for another month. So um, I try not to look into that stuff, but I think ultimately if we're going to play hockey this summer, it's going to be probably without fans. Um, and that's something that uh, the fans are such a big part of, such a big part of our, our rinks and our atmosphere and our, our sport in general. But um, if it means that we can still play without fans, I think all the guys would, would want to do that. But um, I think that we're not thinking about hockey too much right now, to be honest. It's, it's all about keeping people safe and, and saving lives because, um, I mean, if we don't do that and this thing keeps going on longer, we're never going to be able to play into the summer. So um, I think it's all about just, just saving lives right now and keeping everybody safe. Brady, wrap this up for us. What about playing a game without any fans and, you know, having you score a tremendous goal and getting no reaction? How weird would that be? Yeah, I mean, that's uh... – haven't really thought about that, but yeah, it's usually, uh, you know, say you score a big goal, you, you feel pretty good because the fans are going nuts too. So, um, you know, say that happens, you get no reaction. I mean, I, I still think it'd be, you know, different, but it'd be pretty cool because um, I think the guys in the bench would be pumped too. So, um, but put your phone away. Come on now. Uh, I'm going to take a picture. You're like this far from the, the, the TV, uh, the, the whatever, the camera. Yeah. No, so yeah, I haven't really to back to the question. Sorry for the interruption with Big Walter. It's uh, no, it's all good. But uh, um, yeah, I just think it'd just be a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, one more final one for Walt. Uh, you know, I asked Dan Deardorff this once a long time ago. He had these athletic daughters, and he said I asked him, would he, was he more nervous when he played as opposed to watching his children play? And he says it's not even close you're much more nervous watching your kids play. What is it like for you up in the stands watching these two? That's a great question. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is. It's harder. I mean, when you're a player, you just wake up, you go out and play, you don't worry about anything. But when it's your children, no matter how old they are, you get nervous. It's tough because you want to see them succeed. It doesn't always happen. And yet when they things don't go their way, you feel for them. You want to be there to give them a hug. So there are times when we were watching my wife and I, uh, whether it's Taryn playing field hockey or the boys playing hockey, you know, it's, 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 I sometimes lose sleep during the day. I know it's a big game when Matthew played against Edmonton, I was pretty nervous uh, all day and same thing with Brady when he's going to play it, It's tough, but you know, it's definitely easy to be a player, but uh, these guys, they're a different breed. They've handled, you know, all that stuff really well at a young age, which you got to give them a lot of credit for.